Hello and welcome back to another episode of Coffee Pods. It's wonderful to be with you where we're exploring some big questions around Christian healing. And as usual, I am joined by Wes. Hello, Wes. Hi, nice to be back. It is, it is. And we've got some um, good thoughts to go through today. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm going to see where we can go with this. But you talked, Wes, about the story of Lazarus being raised. That was in John chapter 11. Um, this was in a in a previous podcast and you made a point about the stone over the tomb um so what was your thinking here what what was the basis of your thinking well it's really interesting isn't it I I I love um I love Jesus and if there are videos in heaven to watch I I want to go back and, and watch some of these big moments because um you think about it um in the resurrection, the stone that covered the tomb of Jesus um, is moved anyhow by the angels or God. You know, we're yeah. not told, but the angels move the stone about. OK. All right. Mm. So you think, OK, you know, this stone moving capacity, it can it can be done. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And then you come to La- but you're we start at Lazarus's tomb and the stone and Jesus asks them to move the stone yeah and I'm thinking well clearly stones aren't a problem you know and <laughs> and the stone the stone is a huge boulder type thing that um you know just dis- despite the sort of the nice easter cards of a nice round um, yeah. entrance and stuff it was a cave and it was just blocked up by a huge stone and, and actually the entrance of the cave might not have been that big you know necessarily you I mean you could obviously get a dead body through it yeah. and whatever but actually you think about how that might, it doesn't have to be so somebody could walk out yeah um but it's just the picture that we have so what about the stone at Lazarus's tomb and of course the interesting thing that comes uh, about it is that as Jesus um commands Lazarus and, and actually this is one of the s- stories where it's recorded that he shouts yeah. Jesus calls out in a loud voice. So, you know, there's a thing, isn't it? When praying for healing, we often do it very quietly and very, you know, yeah. and absolutely. Is there a moment when we need to, to I won't do it now, but, you know, to really yeah. go for it out loud, you know, just makes me wonder. So this was the question behind my thinking is, um, are there any obstacles to receiving healing? And what keeps us locked in and God shut out? Mm. I think you know just an initial response yes <laughs> and <laughs> and we see it don't we I mean we'll talk about some examples but we do see it in our own lives and we see it when we are ministering here at Acorn and um, actually it's something that some people when they were replying to the study question at the Christian Healing Academy a month ago they were bringing out some of these things some examples I know sin was one of them um being an obstacle but what else Wes have you seen um as obstacles I mean I mean yes sin can be a a hindrance to healing certainly um both in the person who is receiving healing and if I could put it this way uh, the person who's trying to or or praying to release healing which is why you know, in in uh, healing hubs and in healing prayer teams, we need to keep our lives as as clean and as pure as we know how before God, mm-hmm. bearing in mind that we all still retain the capacity to do some really stupid and selfish stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but sin certainly, and that's why you know um, we say to people, you know, when you get the nudge from the Holy Spirit to ask the person, "Is there anything you need to?" that's put right with God before we pray not not as a condition to saying if you don't we won't pray for you but mm-hmm. saying you know if your drains are blocked you want to try and clear the drain before yeah. the water flows so is there anything blocking yeah. so um I'd probably put things like uh, wrong understanding of God and okay. his love um people who will say this is my cross to bear yeah. um I deserve this um you know and 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 even then the people who have said to me healing doesn't take place <laughs> you think okay so actually praying for you there's we're coming from a little way back now yeah. before that um 
I think things like perhaps Lisa um, putting outside, put it, placing ourselves outside of God's work. Um, by, by that, I mean, for instance, um, it really interests me. I used, used, I've led a church for 19 years with mm -hmm. Mary. And, um, you know, people used to say to me, I didn't come to church on Sunday because I wasn't feeling very well. You know, and, and of course, I understand that and, and COVID and everything else. So, yeah. you know, I'm not like, but it just occurred to me, interesting, um, if you're not well, you automatically thought that church was not the place to go. Yeah. Whereas yeah. actually in the New Testament, when people were ill, that's where they went. <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they went to Jesus <laughs> to get healed, you know. And, yeah. and so that just really um, tickled me. But also, in a sense, um, you know that uh, my practice has been to, to try and not surround myself with people who don't have faith. Yeah. I want to be with people who are believing God for more not for people who are telling me that I've all, you know, I can't have what God wants for mm. me. And so there's a thing about placing ourselves, if you like, put it the other way around, where God's working and with people that God is present with. And um, fear, absolutely. Mm. You know, um, any of the stuff of, of the occult and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but certainly those sort of things are the things that are going to um, bung the, the, the channel up. We moved into a new house and um, I plugged the dishwasher in and it didn't work. And uh, it says you need to call an engineer. So I called an engineer and he came along and he looked at it and he took the hose out from the flood, you know, where oh, the outlet thing. Yeah. And he said, ah. And with that, he pulled uh, a rag out of the overflow pipe into the sink. And he said, who, the people who disconnected their dishwasher put this in so that there wouldn't be any water flowing out when okay. they used the sink. And actually, I had to pay out the call-out charge. There's nothing wrong with anything. Oh. It was, <laughs> it was just that somebody had blocked the flow. Yeah. Yeah. And so in relation to healing, anything that can block the flow or if you go back the other way, anything that could open up the flow. Yeah. Is the thing we should focus on. Yeah. I like that. I like that you the way you just twisted it, because it makes it quite you can start thinking of things, can't mm. you, that, that do mm. help with that. OK, so <clears throat> is there anything that we can do to help ourselves or help others? Um, you know, because there are there are going to be people who are feeling like this block is there. Um, yeah, and, and that's a great question, uh, Lisa. And I would say, you know, if there is a block, find out what it is. Yeah. <laughs> get a spiritual plumber in. <laughs> you yeah. Know, get get the thing un, unblocked because one of the things I am utterly convinced of that God does want us to experience his love and his life and his healing power in our generation. Yeah. It's not that God has got a limited number of, of healings that he's got per month. And yeah. once it runs out, you know, you know, unlucky, God has got an abundance. He's always able. He's always willing. He's always present. He's always with us. And so I would say, you know, one of the things that we do is um, we can say, we, we can create the right context, which is why in, in the healing hubs, we're very mindful of how people come to us and how we can make them feel comfortable and at home, but also how we can encourage them to step out in faith. Mm. Um, and I think the other thing that I've noticed, of course, is perhaps even in church, if I tell a healing story, like the one I, you know, I've told just recently, um, I know that some people are going, yeah, right. You know, as if I'm deliberately lying. Yeah. And actually, if they don't think I'm deliberately lying, then they think I'm just naive. Mm. And what they've done is they've excluded the possibility that the living God can still touch living people yeah. and make a living difference. Yeah. But actually, you live with that. You're not expecting God to do anything mm. or to be involved with you. 
Um, I think also not being limited by what other people say. That's a big one. Yep. And uh, can I put it this way? Not even being limited by what some people in church say either. Mm. Um, take the story of Bartimaeus. He's the guy who's blind as Jesus is coming to Jericho. And um, he knows that it's Jesus of uh, Nazareth. Of course, that's what he's told. But actually, he gets a revelation because he calls out Jesus, son of David. Really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. He's told one thing. This is a human king walking by. But actually, he calls out Jesus, son of David, which is the heavenly king's title. Yeah. It's then that the people who were with Jesus, probably wanting to see a miracle or something, <laughs> they tell Bartimaeus to shut up because he's an inconvenience. And he, he doesn't do it. And he cries out the more. And they're really unhappy with him. And in the end, Jesus calls him to him. And, you know, I, I love the fact that Bartimaeus cries out. He makes a fuss. Can I just say, if you need healing, make a fuss until you get it. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, people crying out, um, a bit of a mess. You know, I know that in church we want it to be orderly and quiet and peaceful. And please don't disrupt the service because you've got two and a half minutes for us to get through this hymn but you know I, I understand all of that but actually if you're needing healing and you're desperate I would just say do whatever you've got to do yeah. make as much fuss as you can and of course I, maybe the other thing is just soak yourself in the stories of, of you know in the bible and, and some of the other stories that have, that are around today of Jesus healing people and you could read it and say this is true for me as well mm. this is true for me and i think that's really important so you know in a sense if you've got a stone in the way get it unblocked and then of course the other part of the story is that uh, jesus calls lazarus out and he says to the family take off the grave clothes because he would have been wrapped around with yeah. rags and yeah. things okay and what i would say is once you've been healed don't live in the old live in the new absolutely if you've experienced the life of god carry on living in that life of god don't go back to living the way you were before yeah because that's almost like taking the stone with you and then yeah. putting it back yeah, so yeah. keep in the life of god keep in the life of god lovely yeah i was reading a bit of greg boyd yesterday oh and, yeah um yeah and it he was talking kind of what you're just saying there like it was around the issue of sin but how if we do keep in that life of God like our whole life will will reflect and we will experience it and if we start sort of dabbling into the doubt like you talked about doubt didn't you mm -hmm. things like that then yeah we're going to have a life that is around revolves around those things so I love that keep in the life of God mm -hmm. wonderful so Will you just pray, Wes, for those who feel like they may have this stone that needs to be moved? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Lord Jesus, thank you for the wonderful idea that you would bring Lazarus into life. Mm. And Lord, thank you that stones that block us in have never been a problem to you. So, Father, in the lovely name of Jesus, I'm asking right now, that for those who face an immovable object, Lord, that you would cause heaven to come down. Mm. And whether through human uh, prayers or divine involvement or both, Lord, you would shift, Lord, that which locks us in and shuts you out. That we might receive your life and your healing power today. Mm. So if you're just with us listening, just speak to the stone and say, in Jesus' name, be removed and cast into the sea. Mm. In Jesus' name, be removed and cast into the sea. In Jesus' name, be removed and cast into the sea. Lord, let your life come and let us live in the life of God. Amen. Amen wonderful thanks Wes great to be back with you um, yeah you too looking forward to catching you who are listening next time bye-bye